Hello. And welcome to, Sunday at Bear Branch. A virtual ministry, of the Churches of Christ. We are now rebroadcasting the morning sermon of Brother Brian Barrett, who preaches for our congregation, here at Bear Branch, in Spurlocko, West Virginia. We hope that you will find the lessons profitable, in the study of God's Word, and enlightening to the Christian walk. Brother Barrett has been a preacher, and teacher in the Churches of Christ for over 40 years, a frequent speaker in gospel meetings, revivals, having worked in TV and radio. And now our internet ministry. We now invite you to open your Bibles, and follow along in our lesson of the hour. Now, here's Brian. Good morning. Our lesson today, we want to continue with the thought that we started uh, last Lord's Day. Last Lord's Day, we were looking uh, in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, in the early part, where uh, we were discussing the uh, Beatitudes. If we want to be uh, truly happy as the people of God and happy in the service of God, uh, there are those aspects that we looked at last week. We want to build on that this week. We're going to talk about the fruits of the Spirit as they're revealed in Galatians, the fifth chapter. But before we get there, uh, I want us to understand some of the things that we were talking about last week and as a jumping off point uh, today. In the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, Beginning in verse 17, the Apostle Paul says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk when in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye heard him, ye have heard him, and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus." And be renewed, put off, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you may put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. The Apostle Paul in these verses is talking about a transformation of the people of God. If we're exactly like we were before we obeyed the gospel, chances are we're not the people God wants us to be. There's a reason why in the plan of salvation there is repentance. There is a reason in the plan of salvation, as Paul tells us in Romans 6, that the old man of sin is buried with Christ in that watery grave of baptism, and we rise to walk in a newness of life. And in these verses 22, 23, and 24, part of that transformation is this, that we put off the things concerning our former lives and lifestyles. There's something to be cast off, to be put off. Then there is a renewing of the spirit of our mind. That's part of the process of repentance, is that the way that we act, the way that we think, our goals in life, all of that is, is transformed from the old person of sin to the new person. So we have to put off that former lifestyle and way of life, which was filled with corruption and darkness, sin, and then be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Uh, in the book of Romans, if we go back there <clears throat> for just a moment to Romans, the 12th chapter, 
In verse 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Here we are again, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Put off the old person, the old lifestyle. Transform your way of thinking. Renew the spirit of your mind. And then the Apostle Paul says, Put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And in order to get us to understand what he's talking about, Paul says, wherefore, I mean, based on those things, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. What do we mean put off and put on? Well, Paul says, as part of that renewing of our minds, we put away lying, it's gone. And we speak truth, every person to their neighbors. Verse 26, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. People are motivated by anger, and anger fills them, and they're filled with revenge and grudge and all that. Paul says, uh, you know, again, you know, if you're angry, you know, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. You you need to fix whatever the problem is. Neither give place to the devil. And then he says, let him that stole steal no more. The thief. He has to stop stealing. You can't keep stealing and be a Christian. But then he goes on and says, but rather... Let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Put off the old man of sin, which was the thief. Put on the new man who will work at a good job, a good career, something legitimate instead of illegal, and let him have surplus to give to those that are in need before he took things from others that weren't his to supply his need. Now he's supposed to work with his hands and supply his need, but to also reach out to the needy with the intent that perhaps they won't be led to steal. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Corrupt communication, corrupt speech, things that tear down, exchange that, put on the thing that uh, is indeed uh, after God. And as we go down through here, verse, let all bitterness and wrath, verse 31, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Put off, change the way you think, put on. This is the thing of transformation. So what, we're gonna, what we might say this morning is we're talking about B.C., before Christ, before Christianity. Whatever that was, we have to turn loose of that. <clears throat> and then... We're going to talk about what happens after Christ, A.C. It's not the B.C. and A.D. We're talking about before Christ, before Christianity, and then after Christianity or after we become a Christian, the things that we put off and the things that uh, we uh, do. Now, with that being said, when we go over to the book of 
uh, Galatians, the fifth chapter, most of the time we look at uh, verses 19 through uh, 21 as the things that we shouldn't do. It's one of those lists of sin. And we talk about that uh, you know, quite a bit when people are saying, well, you know, what, what does it mean to be a Christian? We'll go there and we'll talk about, well, if you're a Christian, you won't do this, you won't do this, you won't do this, this is sin. These are the things you need to repent of. If you do these, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. But a lot of times we just leave it there. But this concept of before Christ, before Christianity in our life, and then the renewal and the transforming of our mind through repentance and understanding brings about a change. And that's what's listed here in the rest of the chapter that we generally speak of as the fruit of the Spirit. And so if we look at the latter part of the fifth chapter, starting at verse 19, and going through verse 26, what we have here is that same concept that the Apostle Paul used uh, with the church at Ephesus. There are things that we must put off, and there are things that we must put on. And the fruits of the Spirit are the evidence of a renewed mind. How do we know that a person has truly repented? How do we know that a person has truly changed their way of thinking? And, as Jesus says, by their fruits, you shall know them. You know, we have people who think they can live together and still be a Christian. We have people who believe that, you know, they can deal drugs and illegal things and still be a Christian. We have people who believe that, you know, a little this, a little that, we can do this, we can do that, and it's, it's still okay. Well, if we look at the things that they're doing and the fruits of their lives, nothing's changed. Nothing has really changed if, you know, they're, they're still involved in those things. Now, when we look at the latter part of the fifth chapter about the fruit of the Spirit, beginning in verse 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. The others, there is a law, and the law is so strict that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. It's a pretty strict law. That's the law of sin and death. It doesn't matter which sin. Sin is sin. Sin separates us from God, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Hides his face from us, closes his ears off to our prayers. Now, as we look at this, uh, these two lists, if you want to call them that. When we look at the first part, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, these works of the flesh have to do with the lust of the flesh. Adultery is illicit sexual relations between a married person at least one and another. can be between two individuals who are married to others. And so, <clears throat> rather than honoring the things of, of marriage, we are, again, in a different relationship, trying to acquire the things that are reserved for marriage by the things which are unlawful. Fornication is, again, sexual relationships between individuals who are 
not married. And so adultery is fornication, but not all fornication is necessarily adultery because they can be between two individuals who are not married. But the act itself of adultery, fornication, is pretty much the same thing, the same physical type of relationship. The difference is, is that when two people are engaged in this sexual relationship uh, without marriage, it's just between those two and God. But then when it involves someone who's married, there is a third or fourth person that's drawn into that mess of, of adultery. Adultery fornication primarily is dealing with actual physical contact, which results in a sexual relationship. On the other hand, uncleanness is not the fact you didn't take a bath. Uh, lasciviousness has to do with the lusts of the flesh and the fulfilling of those things. We may not necessarily engage in the physical act itself. But Jesus tells us in Matthew 5 that if a man looks upon a woman to lust after her, he's already committed adultery in his heart. L lasciviousness, that strong evil desire is there. May not actually consummate the action but the mental aspect, remember, Paul's talking about renewing our minds. If you want to be truly happy, I have really, you know, when, when you look at life, uh, people who are involved in adultery are really not generally happy people. They're unhappy people trying to find happiness somewhere else instead of that. So we look at that. Well, you know, again, uh, what replaces that? Look in the list through the Spirit. The transformation is genuine love. Not adultery, not fornication, not uncleanness, not involved in, in, in sexual type things, flirting, all this this kind of thing that's that would be involved in verse 19. Replace that with love, joy, genuine love. Verse uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're not going to take time to turn there and read that, but that's uh, agape love, divine love. You know, just like the old country song, looking for love in all the wrong places. That's what people do. God has built a system of love. He built that in the book of Genesis, the second chapter, with the first man, the first one. It's not good that a man should be alone. So God made help me and we have that statement, what God hath joined together, let not man put us under, divide. That's involving adultery, lust, <clears throat> all these things. God intends for true love, true, true biblical love to be expressed in that uh, relationship, not in that one alone, but in that. And so... As I said, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, a lot of that all has to do with looking for love in the wrong place. Paul says, know where it should be found. The love of God, the love of your husband, your wife, the love of your children, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, those two big laws, love God, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, that's, that's the way in which we approach that. Idolatry. Idolatry is making God in the image of man. And it is a desire to change the law 
to suit the person. Why you suppose when we read places like Romans, the first chapter, you know, why is it people decided not to retain God in their knowledge? They chose not to retain God in their knowledge because God wouldn't let them do what they wanted to do. And so they made for themselves a God that would allow them to do the things that they wanted to do. And so they tried to find joy and happiness through other means. And we have love, then the idea of joy. God, you know, what is it people say all the time? You know, being a Christian, there's no joy in being a Christian because you can't do nothing. God is a kill joy. So people want to create the idol or something that substitutes for that witchcraft. You know, again, these are things which uh, go along with uh, idolatry, serving uh, the darker forces, the things of uncleanness, lasciviousness, all of that. Variants, that means those who cause divisions. Variants are those who cause divisions. Hatred, variants, emulations, which are jealousies, wrath, stripes, seditions, heresies. That's what we see in the world today. You know, it, <clears throat> it troubles me that a person walks down the street, someone just walks up to them and punches them square in the face for no reason whatsoever and leaves them laying there on the sidewalk. I see things all the time. It's, it's a joke. It's funny where they come up to an elderly person and they just for no real reason, don't even know who they are. They just meet them in the street and punch them in the face to watch them fall down and leave them lay there and walk on. We see in some places now the Asian community, people are attacking them, you know, and, and I, again, I don't know what the deal is. But whether it's the color of the skin, whether it's political reasons, whatever it is, all these things... Mankind likes to divide. God says, blessed are the peacemakers. They should be called the children of God. All of these jealousies and divisions and arguments and fussing, God says, find peace. Make peace. Make peace with God accept the ministry of reconciliation, of making peace between man and God, and so doing also make peace among yourselves. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and following talks about the uh, ministry of reconciliation. And so adulteries, fornication, uncleanliness, love, uh, again, Idolatry, witchcraft, joy, hatred, emulations, wrath, stripes, seditions, heresies, the lack of peace. These two lists have very powerful connection. If you list them, I, I, I didn't do it, but if you list them down there, you can draw lines as to which ones apply to what. You know, this this uh, wrath, seditions, heresies. God says we need to put all that stuff off and learn to be long-suffering. Jesus said if you smite you on one cheek, turn the other. Nuh-uh, ain't going to happen. If they clench your fist, I'm going to punch them in the mouth before they ever get a chance to swing. See, that's, that's man's way. Hatred, wrath strife, flying off the handle. And I can't help but say it, holding my breath and stomp my feet because I can't get my way. I've seen that for a long, long time. 
sad when a child does it. It's really sad when an adult does it. Because they can't get their way. Yeah. They resort either to some type of physical strife, violence, those things. God says, learn to be long-suffering. Learn to be patient. That's what long-suffering is, patient. It's the word patience is used in other places. Just like <clears throat> for love, the word charity is used in other places. When he looks at these things, he says gentleness, kindness. You know, rather than dividing and hating and spiteful, exercise some gentleness, some kindness. Put off all of these violent tendencies, emotional stuff that gets out of control. Paul said, you know, be angry and sin not. People, something's going to make you mad. Every time I go to the grocery store, I get mad about something, but I'm not going to burn it down. I mean, be angry about certain things, but sin not. You know, and again, kindness, gentleness, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, partying, out of control. Usually, again, drunkenness is one of the things that you find with revelings, banqueting, celebrating. And people ask about social drinking. You know, what is, is it wrong to drink socially? Well, generally, when people start drinking socially, somebody starts acting stupid. It's not about the fact that somebody drank a beer or that they had something to drink. There's always one person there who can't be happy till they're stupid drunk, and then they mess up, and then they get involved in all these other things that we're listing here. Gentleness, goodness. Goodness is an upright heart. To me, goodness is the opposite of uncleanness. Uncleanness is defiled. It's the things which defile a person. Jesus, when he was on earth, said, it's not what you put in your mouth that defiles a man, but it's what's in the heart of man that defiles a man, that comes out of the man, the actions, the deeds, all of this. This defiles a man. Rather than adultery and witchcraft and, and heresies, Teachings which are, you know, false teachings. You know, I don't like that teaching, so I'm going to teach against it. I'm going to come up with something different. Church has been divided for 2,000 years over these various heresies that arise as somebody doesn't like something, and so they go about trying to prove that basically God was wrong, and this is why, and everybody else has been wrong, but, but I'm right. Faith. You know, rather than adultery, witchcraft, being motivated and moved by all of this, be filled with faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Meekness, gentleness. Still looking at that list of putting off the wrath, seditions, heresy, strife, envy, Meekness, gentleness, temperance, self-control. All those anger issues and all those, it's got to change. It's got to stop. You know, it's, it's not the promise that I will do it. It's the fact that we've been transformed by the renewing of our minds and we're set to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God as we set about to do the latter things of this chapter, the fruit of the Spirit to develop that. Now, fruit doesn't develop overnight, not generally. You know, there's a bud, then there's a bloom, and then there's a little teeny thing that we know is 
the fruit, the apple, the peach, the pear, the cherry, whatever it is. But it's, it's going to take a while to develop. But the idea is, is, is it's developing. You know, we, we can't have it all right now. Some things will take a while. Some things we'll have to work on to produce that fruit in our life. Self-control. The Apostle Paul says, against these things there is no law. Now let's, let's look at that for a minute. They which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. I don't get any stricter than that. And against such things there is no law. Law tends to regulate actions. And so in order to regulate you know, the physical relationships and all that, marriage is designed, there's laws about marriage and fornication and all these things. In order to regulate that, there, there are laws. There are things you can do, things you can't do. There's things you should do. There's a lot that's that's involved in that. But Paul says, you know what? Divine love has no limitations. Jesus was once asked, how many times shall my brother trespass against me and I forgive? Seven times? Jesus says, I wouldn't make it that far. That's not what he said. Matthew 18, he says 70 times 7. And he wasn't speaking literally there, but he was trying to tell him that you know, there, there's, there's not a limit to forgiveness. There's not a limit against love. You can love people as much as you want, as long as you do it the right way. There's difference in the Greek between agape and phileo, uh, types of love, brotherly love, neighborly love, and eros. It's not necessarily a, a, a word that finds itself into the New Testament, but eros is the, the Greek word for which we get the word erotic. Uh, and there is fornication, and fornication, the Greek word for that is pornea. And if you've ever heard the word pornographic, Again, that's where that word comes from. And so when you're trying to figure about adultery and, and these kind of things, we're looking at erotic, we're looking at the word pornography, we're looking at those kind of words versus true love, caring, putting the welfare of others above our own, exercising the love for others that God had in loving us. What is the limit of charity? Well, again, 1 Corinthians 13 shows that love never fails. Where there be prophecies, they shall cease. Their prophecies shall fail. Where there is tongues, they shall cease. Paul says, now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, the greatest of these is charity. When Paul writes to the church at Ephesus, in a, or the church at Philippi in Philippians, the fourth chapter, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Joy. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always. What's the limit of joy? How much joy can I have? Paul says, You can be as happy as you want to be. As long as you understand what true happiness, what true joy is. That you're not misguided in that. Peace, peacemaking, and all these that we have listed here. And so Paul says, this is the difference. You know, the before Christianity, the before Christ, the uh, lust of the flesh, the works of the flesh, sins of the flesh, however it's defined 
in many different places in the scriptures, create a certain type of person, someone who is lustful, hateful, jealous, you know, divisive, lying, corrupt communication, speech, all, you know, that we could, we could go on and on. That creates a certain type of person. Now, it's, it's sort of like mixing stuff together. You throw in a little of this, you throw in a little of that. Sometimes you put in more of this and less of that. But nonetheless, it is the sum of all of its parts. Some people may have a little bit more of one thing and a little less of others. Some people may be filled with, with all of it. But it creates a person which Paul says can never enter the kingdom of heaven. So sometimes you just have to throw it out and start all over again. You know, I, I think about the movie Coal Miner's Daughter. And there's a, a series of scenes in there where the young girls were baking pies and they were taking those pies and the guys were paying to meet the guys. They were buying their pies and they would sit down and eat the pie with the young lady and kind of get to know it was social. And I, I just remember uh, Loretta sitting there and, and uh, the guy who was playing future husband, had, there was a chocolate pie and, and she, he dug into that pie and put it in his mouth and he asked her exactly how much salt goes into a chocolate pie. And instead of using sugar, she had used salt. And friends, there's no way to fix that. You just got to throw that out and start all over again. So we have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. You know, we, you can't keep a little bit of all the other and, and thin it out or whatever. You, you've, sometimes you have to start all over. And that's what Christianity is, is about. Whoever we were before Christ and before Christianity touches us, through repentance and devotion to Christ, we make a determination that we're going to walk in the newness of life. And we're going to put off that old man of sin. And we're going to develop in our lives the fruit of the Spirit for which there is no law, no regulations for these things. In closing this evening, we wish to thank you again for spending your time in study with us. We hope the lesson has been uplifting and motivational. We encourage you to return again for our next lesson. Until then, may we invite you to visit our website. You will find many study opportunities. Our resource page has links to the Gospel Broadcasting Network, a 24-7 station with many great Christian programs and speakers. In Search of the Lord's Way, with Brother Phil Sanders. We have two links for Bibles and downloadable software. If you are looking to really expand your knowledge, perhaps you might like to try World Video Bible School, a college-level learning site free of charge. So, until next time, may God bless and keep you in His care as we walk together in His truth. And remember as always, the Churches of Christ salute you.